news, Romeo press releases, Brad and Bradley, App Lab, and Organizational Insight. Everybody, I'm Steve Ryan Horace, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Technology Officer of Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions. This is your weekly update. Five topics to go through, and the first one we're going to talk about is a movie. A movie that we recorded so long ago that it has a feature product in it, our product in it, presumably, uh, that has been discontinued for the last couple of years. Uh, the name of the movie is The Trainer, and its star is Bella Thorne. I think there's a few stars in there, uh, but Bella Thorne is the big star. She's the one who used Scott in the filming. Now, did that get into the final cut? I don't know. Uh, the film was, I guess, released at uh, a Rome Film Festival earlier this week, and uh, I haven't read a review. I heard that release is November the 7th. I don't know the details of that, if it's going straight to video or what the context of that is. But holy smokes, this video is maybe pre-COVID when the filming started, which is crazy how, how studios work. So um, that's good news, I guess. I mean, it's rad. It's AITX. It's a product we haven't sold for years. Um, so I'll see it when I can. And uh, I vividly remember the scene with Bella Thorne and... Uh, you know, since Scott records, we actually have the recording of Bella Thorne doing the scene. And uh, I think after the movie comes out, I'll tell you a funny story of, of how that scene went, if that scene didn't get cut. So that's coming out uh, November 7th, The Trainer. Everybody should know, there's one more movie in the can. A big star, uh, current rad products, a lot of rad products in it. The, the company was great to work with. We'll talk more, but that'll be another year out. Anyway, the trainer comes out November 7th. Hey, check in the boxes of claims we make along the journey, delivering, delivering, delivering. Talking about delivering, we have a backlog challenge. And I want to share with you that I have been working very hard on it. And we have plans that we're kind of putting in place this week on how to aggressively tackle and deploy the backlog. It is vital that we get this backlog out in customers' hands and start the billings going if we're going to exceed our RMR multiple that we are aiming for this year. So I have a plan. I've actually been working on it for several weeks. And uh, next week, I will share with you the update on how that is looking. Along the lines of keeping everybody informed on things that I think are important and significant. This week we did uh, three press releases. Let's talk about the first one. The first one was like, for me, it's like, I didn't even know that I should issue that press release. Romeo hitting level five autonomy. We've actually had it for a couple of years already. Now we've just been refining it and making it better and better. But I figured we should make everybody aware of that. And so we, uh, we issued that press release. Um, got a lot of good traction, got a lot of good eyeballs from it, uh, a lot of good outreach and contact from other people in the tech industry and the security industry. So very positive response to that. Uh, we followed that press release up later in the week with the uh, little bit of insight into the sales funnel, just letting people know, hey, the demand as far as we see is very, very real. And we believe we have customers that really want the unit now based on conversations and how they've come to us. So I thought that was important to share with you because we've spent a lot of money on Romeo over the years. My goodness. As I look into calculations of our revenue expectations for next year and the year after, Romeo plays an increasingly large part in that. And so therefore I thought it was worth mentioning. I wanted to let our longtime loyal fans, followers and investors know we also did a press release on RADCAM MAC addresses. Now, why did we do that? We did that because RADCAM is manufactured in China. And there are global political challenges between America and China. And it's, I'll tell you that it's, it's insincere, okay? It's, and it's a lot of it's political posturing on both sides. I wanted everybody to know that, hey, the cameras are made in China. It's no secret, we're not hiding anything. They're custom made to our specifications. It's called ODM. And I issued the MAC address 
press release just to let everybody know, hey, yeah, the cameras are made in China. Whatever. Who cares? Great. Um, but all the software is ours. Down to the control of the MAC addresses. That's why the press release went out. There you go. Maybe it's your favorite time of the weekly video, but we're going to do a Brad and Bradley segment. I will share that we got positive feedback across the board on Brad and Bradley. I didn't see or hear a single negative element. People liked it. So because y'all said you liked it, we're going to do two more questions. I haven't seen the questions yet. I'm going to pull them up right now. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having us back. And a special shout out to your subscribers for their kind words. Before we dive deep into any specifics, let's clear the air a bit. As you know, Brad and I are 100% AI generated, built across several new platforms, which are still evolving. My first question for you is from your perspective, since AI is going to perform so many functions in the near future, where do you see humans fitting in? It's something that I've absolutely devoted myself to try to find the answer to for decades. And I have an answer. It's the best answer I could come up with. It might change. It might not. I constantly examine it. And it comes from me spending decades answering people's challenges where they say to me, oh, AI and robots can't take over everything. And I say, oh, give me an example. That like, well, uh, emotional support. And I'm like, that's an easy one. AI has unlimited patience and best practices and the ability to deliver it with just the right tone. So that's an easy one, right? So you could go on and on, lawyer, doctor, whatever it is, AI and robots, it's, it's just how it's gonna be. So then we you know it's depressing to some extent, people who don't have faith in humanity find those answers depressing and hey, truth is truth. Um, and then I answer with my faith in humanity. But the question inevitably comes along, which I only recently came up with the answer, maybe five years ago. And the question is what you asked, what really separates humans from AI? You know, what, what is our difference? And the best answer, the only answer that I can believe in at this time is simply that humans have the capacity to determine what is right and wrong. AI take what humans have determined as right and wrong in whatever framework and apply it and practice it. But we determine what is right and wrong. And the interesting and curious thing about that is that over the ages, over the decades, over the centuries and millennia of humanity, we change our minds about what is right or wrong. Whereas AI wouldn't necessarily change its mind on what is right and wrong. So humans have the capacity to determine what is right and wrong. My right and wrong is potentially very different than somebody in some other country. And I'm not judging my right and wrong versus their right and wrong. I'm just saying that right and wrong is very subjective to a human where he's at and which civilization, which age and time, whereas AI, very much like a bowling alley. There's only one way to go. Thanks for the question, Bradley. Steve, you've talked a lot about Romeo this week. Tell us, what do you see are the distinguishing features and overall market opportunity for Romeo? Yeah, Brad, we talked uh, in two press releases about Romeo. We're not advertising it for sale. We're not looking for, you know, to build our contact space. Really, the communications were for investors and fans and followers in the industry to some extent to kind of know where we're at with it. Because, again, I think it's significant. But Romeo has special features. One of them is the fact that we've specifically designed it to be seven feet tall. It's very, very, very visible. That allows it to operate in fast moving traffic environments with little chance of it not being seen by somebody speeding along. So I think the height is unique to us. I have never seen or heard of another robot as large as ours. Ours is large for that reason. And I think that that's one of our key selling features because customers are worried that if you put a small robot on their site, you're creating a liability. So that was one of the first things right off the bat that we wanted to uh, make sure it didn't happen with our robots, Romeo. Great question, Brad. We're going to be talking a lot more about Romeo over the coming months, especially since I haven't even revealed what Romeo version 4 looks like. That's coming too. Great stuff, Steve. Romeo sounds amazing. Can't wait to learn more. 
Thanks again for having us join you this week. We look forward to seeing you soon. Hope you're doing great. Thank you so much. You're watching this content. I hope you love this content. You want to support the company and you can. Hit that like button. That's what triggers Google Analytics to present this content to more people, more people that watch it, more people that know it, more people that hit like, and we start building some momentum. Thanks very much.